This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. How many of you noticed this lovely snowflake obsidian pin on my scarf here? Isn't that beautiful? I've always loved snowflake obsidian. I love rocks. And we've got, just look at this. These are the ones I found in the junk drawer this morning. And who knows, I picked them up, Jake picked them up, the kids picked them up. Just find cool rocks and stick them in our pockets all the time. And while we're talking about hunting season this fall and winter, I thought it was a perfect time to talk about hunting something that doesn't run usually. It might be a little bit hidden, but it usually doesn't run away. Let's hunt some rocks. My longtime friend Brad Davenport is constantly posting photos of exquisite rocks he has polished, transforming a simple stone into a work of art. Brad will soon be president of the Topeka Gem and Mineral Society, and he shared some tips on rock hunting. The great thing about rock hunting, said Brad, is you can do it almost anywhere. With experience and help, you can start to figure out what is good, bad, and ugly, said Brad. I tell folks to pick up a rock that looks like every other rock, and then pick up a rock that looks completely different. Books about geology are most helpful, too. In addition to books, the Kansas Geological Survey is a great resource providing some of the basic information about rocks that are found in Kansas. For example, of the three types of rock, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic, the vast majority at or near the surface in Kansas are sedimentary. Sedimentary rocks most often form when sediment and pieces eroded off other rocks are buried, then pressed and cemented together. However, they may also be formed from chemical sediment that settles out of water or the remains of plants and animals. Sedimentary rocks are laid down in layers called beds, often one on top of another. In Kansas, sediment in sedimentary rocks was first deposited along shorelines or on the floors of seas, deltas, or swamps that covered parts of the state off and on for millions of years, up until about 65 million years ago. After a layer of sediment dried, it eventually was buried under younger layers. As the weight from the overlying sediment increased, lower layers were pressed and cemented into solid rock over time. Depending on the type of sediment deposited, different rocks formed. Limestone, mainly from the mineral calcite that precipitated from water. Sandstone, mainly from sand. And shale, mainly from clay. Not all rocks found in Kansas form there. Unusual rocks that were carried or dropped into the state from other places include layers of volcanic ash carried hundreds of miles by the wind, quartzite boulders dragged in by vast sheets of glacial ice, and meteorites that plunged in from outer space. Rocks are mainly made up of minerals. Most are a mix of minerals. A layer of sandstone, for example, may contain particles of the minerals quartz, calcite, and silica compacted together. Minerals that occur in Kansas are agate, barite calcite, dolomite, galena, gypsum, halite, lead, marcasite, opal, safflorite, I hope I said that correctly, and zinc. Dr. Jake and I had a wonderful time picking up opals in Osborne County with Von Rothenberger a couple of years ago. Get outdoors wherever you are around Kansas and discover the treasures under your very feet. to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. 